So in terms of uh, having a magnetic field on the Earth, shielding is a very important idea. Now, the uh, shortcut we use for magnetic fields is this letter B. Okay, you would think that the shortcut letter for magnetism would be M, but M is already used for mass. So in physics, we run out of letters because there's more than 26 ideas in nature to study. So sometimes we go to Greek letters, and sometimes we just start using whatever letters are left. So traditionally, this, the letter B, capital B, stands for magnetic fields. The units are in Teslas, or after Nikola Tesla, and this, this German guy named Gauss, but we're not going to worry too much about the weird units in math because we're trying to hit on the ideas. So anyway, the Earth's magnetic field naturally shields the Earth, and it bottles high-energy cosmic radiation from the sun. And it pushes it towards the north and south pole because that's where the field lines are strongest right around the poles of a magnet. You guys know the classic way to look at how the field looks like around a bar magnet? You guys ever do this in elementary school? You take a bar magnet and then you sprinkle over like a piece of paper on top or an overhead some iron filings, exactly. They act as mini compasses. Are. And we have a little bit more high-tech version you'll see when you go to the different stations. We have these little magnetic field viewer cards that have a iron filing suspension. So anyway, because the radiation gets pushed to the north and south poles of the Earth, you get what's called the aurora borealis, or the northern lights, which looks like rippling sheets of purple, greens, reds, and oranges, high in the sky, dark at night. You can only see this as you go far north or far south. Anyone ever see the northern lights before? Were you camping and hunting in? In Canada. There you go. Perfect. Usually in America, North America, you got to go to like, like Minneapolis, or if you go on a cruise in Alaska, you'll see it. And in fact, let me show you guys a couple of pictures here. Again, the, the magnetic field of the Earth shields us from the radiation, and then it heats up the sky. So it's kind of like a plasma TV in the sky. And the, the Eskimos first described this as rippling sheets of uh, reds, oranges, greens. And everyone thought, like, you know, maybe the Eskimos were smoking something they shouldn't be smoking. But all it is is it's just natural. It's a natural light show in the sky there. And uh, I think Eskimo legend is it's the Inuit gods fighting it out in the sky. So if you ever get the opportunity to go far north, far south, and you're out camping on dark nights, look for the aurora borealis, the, normal light, the uh, northern lights there. Natural display of uh, magnetic shielding there. One way to look for that is you check the astronomical forecast to look for the northern lights. And every 11 years or so, the sun freaks out, and it kicks out intense solar radiation, as well as super strong magnetic fields. And what's crazy is it actually knocks out satellites radio stations, power stations on Earth, it's very disruptive. If you're born during one of these big solar storms, kids born that year, either yourself, one of your friends, or a younger or older sibling, kids tend to be a little crazy there. So you know what, I probably need to go check when the last solar flare is for uh, baby Lao number three, because uh, my little guy is like totally boy now, going crazy there, breaking everything. Magnetism is a part of nature, it's part of the Earth itself, and knowing how that works is, is very important, because not only is it a part of nature, but it's a fundamental part of all of modern life.